How does that go, Eric? Well, after a deep discussion of our vast strategy, go team! <laughs> Down the Sound is usually a two-day, double-handed long race from Shilshol to Gig Harbor and back. This year, due to COVID and the inability to do an overnight, it was shortened to around Blakely Rock, Duwamish Head, and then home. Added to the challenge was that you could choose which mark to round first. What this means is that each boat has a special rating created from an equation that considers time and distance for each boat. This is done for equity, so different designs of boats can compete against one another and it's fair. So instead of a normal regatta start where the math is done at the end of the race, in pursuit style races like this, each boat is assigned a start time unique to its rating. Theoretically, all boats could finish at the same time if sailed to their maximum capacity. This means that it's super exciting when you are on the course because every boat you pass, you are actually beating. Right, give me some cackle. <laughs> Silly girl. Did you get all the boats behind us, Eric? <laughs> There's all behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Silly. Pay attention to your driving. This is Selchi, a super competitive T-bird that we've raced with before. This was our second double-handed race and our first J&J. &J. Our start was clumsy and put us behind. We were frustrated by it, but we kept our head in the game. O is a quick little boat and we gained speed and started to climb. She's designed to point high and stay fast. The wind was predicted to be light this day, but ended up being a pretty steady southerly for most of the race. We were shocked when finally we got to the rock. This shall forever be known as the time that we run around Lake Lily Rock first. Hot on our ass at the beginning of the race was another Olsen 25 that we're pretty excited about named Sugar Bee. The boats closest to us by the rock were Kirk and Melanie on a Capri 25 named Tailwind. And of course, the two boats we were watching most closely, Daryl Jensen on his Express 27 alternate reality and Candace and Nick Farley on their More 24 Morphine. We were in a very competitive class with those two and I was stoked to race against Candace, who I think is a total badass. As we got closer to the Duwamish head mark, we crossed some J80s who had decided to go the other way. They gave us props for good driving, which was thrilling for me. And then our competition, the Express 27 alternate reality caught us. Not as thrilling for me. We popped our kite and were in a crazy fast reach with it when we started losing ground. I believe this happened for two reasons. One, we aren't as good downwind yet and are still trying to figure out the boat. Two, our kite is 25 years old. It even has tail tails. Not sure why. It's like a big bed sheet and also now apparently has a small hole that needs to be patched. And most importantly, and tragically, we followed alternate reality to the east side of a giant container ship moored. We thought we would get current relief. We thought we would stay out of the shadow of the boat. What happened next completely sucked. A huge power boat and a tug went to the east of the ship as well. We were on the edge of the wind shadow. The boats went on either side of us in such a way that we got hit with both of their wakes and confused seas. This just swept us right into the wind shadow and we literally came to a halt with no steerage. Right in the middle of the fucking race. The race coup track is painful. We watched it several times and each time we're like, ah, uh, it really actually hurt. Also, everyone sign up a race queue. It's so fun. We got out of it, and as the video shows, we tried our best to catch up, but we got passed by all the J105s. We saw some J80s go by. Gray Wolf caught up with us finally at Shill Shoal Bay, which to me is a huge compliment, and Jean and Ev yelled over their hellos, and we all lamented that the wind was starting to die. With the finish line in sight, it was like someone was just turning off the southerly that had carried us all day. I was excited to see David Miller and his new ride One Life so close and all the other boats with colorful kites approaching. It took about a minute and a half for us to cover three boat lengths to finish. Overall for the day, 50 boats raced. We got 15th out of all of those. In our class of seven boats, we got third. And in the Jack and Jill out of 25 boats, we got eighth. I'm super stoked about those results because everyone ahead of us were way better sailors than me and they were more experienced sailing together than Eric and I are. It also took some fucking amazing boats quite a while to climb up our ass and pass us. 
I really give Eric all the credit because he is an amazing sailor and racer, and I am so proud of all of his years participating and leading in this amazing sailing community. Overall, it was a badass day full of wins. Never in my sailing career have I been the lead boat in any part of any race. I super hope it's not the last because it was hella fun. Also, anyone want to buy us a spinnaker? Thanks, Sloop Tavern Yacht Club. You guys rock. I so appreciate all the races you're putting on despite this crazy year.